Hi there, YouTube. Sorry about the way I'm dressed. Wait, no I'm not. I'm dressed the way I feel comfortable, and if you think I'm too sexualized, then try not to torture yourselves. I'm a grown woman, and I get to say what I wear in my own space. I'm here to inform, entertain, and annoy people, in no particular order. It's not my job to be the ultimate fashion plate every second of every day. I can be if I need to, but I don't to dig through the bullshit that's been wafting through the gammaverse lately. If you have a problem with me showing skin, I have a lovely hand basket you can very politely go to hell in. As for why you're getting me, and not say, Ren or Tabby, is that they deal mostly in the destruction of disinformation and or getting mad at shit for reasons I won't go into. No kidders. I deal in toxic ideologies, and the people spreading those to the credulous. I know Ren has this whole series on feminism, and she's usually okay dealing with it. I asked for this one because it's dealing with the other side of that particular ideology, and its effects on a particular subset of people, the white knights, a group of mostly men, usually middle class white, that are either so credulous or so desperate for positive attention from a woman that they take it upon themselves to attack others in defense of people that in a lot of case actively despise them. It's saddening, watching these people bow and scrape and debase themselves for a good boy, delivered in a sarcastic tone by a woman that wouldn't give them the time of day any other way. Even then, most of them consider these pitiful creatures beneath contempt, worse than the men they're actively trying to squash. I'd like to pull an Emma Watson, and invite you to see the other side of the coin. Most women that I know in today's society want a man they can partner with, support, and be supported by. They don't want or need sniveling shit stains they have to race, because mum was doing it wrong. Okay, that's not entirely true. A lot of women want what their grandmothers had, a man that's there with a paycheck twice a month supporting her with the best lifestyle ever. I want to be free to do what I want as I feel the urge, provided that said thing is not illegal. I want a partner that supports my dreams, and has a few of his own. Okay, I'm off track now. What I want you people to do is take your hand off the mouse of the little X button, take your shoes off, grab some popcorn, and listen for a bit. If you don't want to watch me change poses every so often, still half nude, you don't have to. The person I'm deconstructing this week isn't much to look at either, so you'll be pretty safe just closing your eyes and listening. For those that like watching me prance around in my unmentionables, then go ahead and look. I said up front that I don't mind. If I did, I'd grab Tabby's favorite turtleneck and a huge ass hoop skirt. Every human being over the age of 12 has seen something like it before, or if they haven't by the time they get to 18. I recommend they watch a few films by Mercedes Carrera. We're all human, and we follow the same basic body plane. If you can't deal with seeing what's between a person's armpits and their knees, then you have far worse problems than you think I have. So, then. On with the show. Kage caught this one on Twitter earlier today, and got a chance to talk to Noel Plum over email and Twitter concerning his thoughts on the matter. Thunderfoot didn't answer a request to comment. But then I think he was too busy laughing to really have much to say. The video we're showing today is 41 minutes and 21 seconds, and in the grand tradition of earlier deconstruction videos, I'm going to let this white knight yammer on and interject arguments and snarky comments along the way, and otherwise be insulting and contrary. Noel had a few things to ask, and I'll get those in too. All right, YouTube. So this is going to be my first attempt at making this video. I don't. Why, hello. Fancy meeting you here. It's almost like someone wanted me to meet you. Okay, they did, but you're not going to like it, especially with the comments turned off on your video. So then, would tell us this is your first attempt, so you can be proud later that you got it all out in one piece before I set fire to your argument. I don't know how to edit. I don't really edit videos, as many people know. Um, so we'll see how this goes. You don't edit videos? This is gonna get stupid quick, isn't it? <laughs> I promised a while ago that I would make a video about Noel Plum. Um, but actually, I'd like to slightly redirect this video um, just to, to be about people like Noel Plum. I'll talk about him specifically. 
and why he pissed me off and why he frustrated me on Twitter. Uh, but really, he's just one example of a whole category of people who talk that way, who think that way, who act that way. You know, let me get some light on in here. People like that. You mean folks that criticize radical feminists for devaluing men to the degree that a pound of ground beef is worth more? Or people that seem to think that the message they're spreading is toxic? Oh, and sweetie, you want to turn the light on before you start filming. Attention to detail is important if you want to get anywhere in this business. I'm almost as a DHD as Kuge, and even I can do that. So let me talk about Noel Plum specifically and why I yelled at him on Twitter, basically. It wasn't very civil. You can say that again. You've talked to him exactly once on Twitter, and all it amounted to was you ranting at him 140 characters at a time in a huge block. There were perhaps 20 tweets, indirectly calling him every name in the Raid Fan playbook. Um, but, you know, in, in light of all of the things that has happened online, that have happened online recently, um, with Gamergate and just anti-feminist sentiment uh, and attacks on women, attacks on all sorts of people. Here you conflate Gamergate with attacks on women and other undefined people. From me to you, Knight, you don't have a shred of evidence that Gamergate was behind even one attack. You can barely prove that any of them so much as used harsh language. If you think I'm letting you get away with that one, you can kiss my black ass. No, on second thought, don't. If this is only the beginning and you're already hauling that shit out, I don't want that mouth anywhere near me. Um, I just couldn't deal in, on that day, in that moment, with someone like Noel Plum, that specific kind of person. And so the person this video is about, the person I'm talking about, the kind of person. Um, you wasted 15 seconds saying absolutely nothing and staring at your computer monitor. I watched his videos, and he seems to be a normal guy to me. That accent of his is dead sexy too, but that's just a bonus. You can't even read your script. If you can't deal with someone like Noel Plum, then you need to go down to the bar and hang out for a weekend during football season. Is that real obnoxious, obtuse, pseudo intellectual dipshit? Look who's talking. You're so uptight, everyone can see what you're not packing. As for pseudo intellectual, you're looking like you've got a real bad case of Dunning Kruger syndrome yourself. Um, who splits hairs. You know, we're talking about the kind of guy who, you know, looks up a word in the dictionary and tries to redirect an entire discourse on the basis of the use of a word. As Kuge would say, words have meanings, a power of their own. They represent ideas and concepts that cannot exist otherwise. Without them, our power for abstract thought is greatly diminished. That's why spelling, grammar, and word choice matter. As for splitting hairs, I didn't see that in Noel's footage. But you seem to be off to have fun in my granddad's cherry orchard. Um, and spouts logical fallacy, logical fallacy, logical fallacy. You know. Mm. <laughs> no, he didn't. He mocked some of Anita's bullshit, but no logical fallacies except a possible slippery slope that turned out to be entirely justified, as the slope began and ended in the same place. You, however, are working on a huge straw man. <laughs> Uh, basically just attacking the semantics of, of what someone says. You know, somebody says a statement about something, and they'll pick apart the statement, and they'll make the argument about the form of the statement, the use of a single word, um, and speculate. It's, it's really hard for me to explain in great detail exactly what I'm talking about. As I said just 34 seconds ago, word choice matters, especially in writing. If you don't believe me, ask IGDA their poor choice of words and lack of forethought landed them in very hot water a couple of days ago. Part of arguing with an idea rather than a person is taking apart the semantics and examining word choice. If you read a fine feminist however you want in an argument, you've committed the fallacy of equivocation. 
For that matter, the men started their own rights movement when feminism stopped being about equality of opportunity and started being about feminists getting all the cake and fuck everyone else. The dictionary definition isn't the one being used anymore, although it does come in handy when luring in recruits. If you change the meaning of a word mid-sentence and expect me not to call you on it, you're out your damned mind. Mona may have raised an atheist, but she didn't raise an idiot. Words mean things, and calling it hair-splitting is disingenuous. But, you know, if you're someone like me, if you've talked about feminism online probably even once, you're, you're bound to have encountered a person like this. Like what? Can you just not define terms? Do you need a lesson? Or maybe you need a bath bag? Looks like I'm gonna need one of those at this rate. No Plum was just a particularly good example of it. Um, so what is the kind of behavior that I'm talking about? What, if, if someone asked me, what do you wish, Methevin, that people wouldn't do anymore? What kind of behavior? What kind of argumentation? Uh, what kind of discussion? Um, it would be this kind of discussion. It'd be someone like Noel Plum. So here's what I would like to not see anymore online. Oh, yes. Do tell. I can hear the gears grinding clear over here while you struggle to read the script right under your nose. Or is it that you have the long-term memory of a guppy? Especially from people who fancy themselves as intellectual in some way, when nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, they're pseudo-intellectuals at best. Um, I found Noel's material well-spoken and insightful. He may not be as well-papered as Dr. Mason, who I assume you're going to get to later, but he does have a brain in his head, unlike some people. You, you know, let, let me backtrack here. Again, this is probably going to be very rambly, because I'm just kind of doing this on a whim now. Uh, <laughs> also getting people off my back about not having made this video for weeks now. Um, I was on Twitter, and No Plum... I, I responded to No Plum, to be fair. I'm pretty sure I was the one who engaged him. I could be wrong. Maybe it was the other way around. I've long since blocked him, and the conversation is weeks old at this point, so I'm not going to go back and, and look. I, I just couldn't care enough to do that. Uh, if you couldn't care enough to do that, then why did you bother to do a 40-plus minute video about it, especially now that you've admitted that not only are you doing it on a whim, but you can't be bothered to do the basic research required from your own damn timeline? Your subs pressured you into it. Is that your excuse? I either have a modicum of respect for your target, of half a ball and stand up to them and tell them that you can't be bothered. Rambling, half-assed crap doesn't speak well of you. It's almost like you're being paid for this shit or something. Um, but the discussion was about something Anita Sarkeesian had said, where, I guess, oh, some weeks ago, she made a comment in regards to that school shooting that I think happened uh, somewhere in Canada. Did it happen in Toronto? I'm, I'm actually not sure. I haven't been keeping up with the news very much. Um, obviously, it's a tragedy, but that's needless to say. You fucking moron. I was trying not to use foul language with you, but now you've stepped in it. The shooting was over in a town called Marysville, in the state of Washington. Gidge and Ren live not far south of there. I'm not sure. But I think Tabby lives about south of them, even. If you're going to come to the table to make an argument, make an argument. If you're going to run on at the mouth about things you have no knowledge about and can't be bothered to look up, then shut off your camera and go home. If you want actual information on what happened, then Ren did a video at the time, and you can go look. She railed at Anita too, for her attempts to make herself relevant again, and pimp her friend's book. But Anita Sarkeesian had mentioned that, you know, perhaps this is a symptom of toxic masculinity. And I would go even farther, uh, further, rather, to assert that, yeah, of course it is. Of, of course it is. There's, there's probably some element of that. I, I kind of just contradicted myself. I said, of course, and then probably, what do you want? It's like seven in the fucking morning here. Um, but... That, that was the fairly innocuous statement that Anita Sarkeesian made. Uh, That's flat-out bullshit. Innocuous, my black ass. 
That was Anita trying to seize control of the conversation in an attempt to shame men into towing the line the way you have. She did it to poison the well in advance of all the questions that would naturally come from that sort of a tragedy. You blowing off the event and then having the intestinal fortitude to swallow her shit without looking at it makes me want to vomit. Um, which is by far not coming out of a vacuum. You know, people have researched um, masculinity as a set of behaviors, as, as a cultural norm uh, in, in the West, and in many places for that matter, for quite some time now, in a, in a great variety of fields, you know, in sociology and anthropology and psychology. Um, you know, people have researched this. It's I notice you didn't list any names to support this, either in your video or in the description. I want a complete list of such studies on my list by noon tomorrow. Okay, no I don't. I can look them up myself, and I guarantee that if there are any, they were written by devout feminists with axes to grind. Andrea Dworkin, Gail Dines, and Valerie Solaris all come to mind. There's a, there's a discourse about it. So she did not say this from out of nowhere, from the ether. You know, there's research to back up that way of thinking about masculinity and it's should be known it should be obvious that if you're questioning the kind of masculinity that we have in our culture that could and does and many people have asserted through research does lead to these kinds of behaviors and can contribute to them asserted through research is that even possible you do research from a testable base question is masculinity toxic in the West, for example, and then you design a series of experiments with proper controls to answer the question. From there, you get conclusions, which can then be tested again by someone else. You accuse Dr. Mason and Noel Plum of pseudo-intellectualism? Bitch, please. You can't even figure out the difference between an assertion and the conclusion reached by empirical research. Um, what the fuck was I just gonna say, I'm sorry. The point being, it's not only a harmless statement, it's not offensive to anybody in particular, it's not demonizing men. Either you're a po, or your brain fucking died. That statement was not demonizing men. Do you just not think? How could that not piss at least some people off? You're defending a woman that's made a fortune on the backs of her victims with the whole poor me, I'm the victim of nasty, evil men thing. She's building up to a career of destroying men and infantilizing women. I mean, I, I would really challenge people, like, what the hell do you mean when you say that talking about toxic masculinity demonizes men? I really want to know, because I don't understand myself how people's thought processes work this way. It's like, are you looking to be offended by something a feminist says? Name me a third wave feminist that's not offended by the existence of men. Go on, try it. Can't do it, can you? There's a reason I swore off feminism as soon as I figured out what it was up to. I like men. I like men that'll work with me. I like men that won't coddle me the second they see a drop of blood. I like men that don't treat me like I'm a piece of blown glass. Oh, and sex. Definitely the sex. Especially if he knows how to do more than push a couple of times and pass out. And this is sort of like, yeah, this is the closest thing I can do. Uh, yeah, some feminist kind of said something about masculinity, so I'm offended as a man. Um, I, mean, I mean, is that what this is? I don't understand. That much is obvious. Most men, and any woman that truly cares about men do understand, and we are appalled. But no plum is just the kind of guy who will come in there and start to mansplain, as they say, why this is so fucking offensive. Um, and I just can't fucking stand it. I can't stand this pseudo intellectual You know, this is the kind of shit that would not pass in one of my undergraduate classes. If you handed me a paper, and obviously I don't teach, you know, sociology, human behavior, or anything like that. But nevertheless, you know, there's some... There's some standard for academic writing across the board, regardless of what topic you're writing in. I, I think most people would agree with that. And, you know, even though I don't teach that topic, if someone handed me a thesis, just a thesis statement, never mind an actual paper, that said, 
Feminists demonize men. And in this paper, I would like to talk about the words of Anita Sarkeesian and how her statement of toxic masculinity can contribute to bad male behavior that leads to mass murder um, is, um, is offensive to men as a class of people. Like, I would reject your thesis. If you, if you gave that thesis statement to me and said, I would like to write a term paper for an undergraduate course, when I'm talking about, you know, we're talking like the lowest of the low when it comes to academic writing here. I would reject that. And I would say, no, I don't think that you have a viable thesis here. I don't see any way, I don't foresee in any reasonable universe how you're going to make the connection between such an innocuous statement and some mass conspiracy of feminists to demonize men or male sexuality or male identity or any of this stupid bullshit like that. I don't fucking see it. And you can manipulate the words all you want. You can infer things all you want. I don't know what you do for a living, but I do know that you haven't read Anita's master's thesis. Where I went to school, that wouldn't pass muster after the 8th grade, and it would barely scrape by then. Besides which, no one would turn in a statement like that, because that's not what happened. The kid shot up a school, followed by her using it for not just shameless self-promotion, but to advance her narrative that men are evil, vile, broken things that need to be fixed. From the sounds of you, you're the one that's been fixed, in the veterinary sense of the word. See? No equivocation. Learn to think critically, and examine the entire argument. Anita's statement, which you can't remember, doesn't exist in a vacuum. I would let that undergrade write the paper, because to deny them the opportunity would be to stop a debate before it can begin, and that's not the way academia is supposed to work. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it can't be done. I connected Anita to her misandry in less than a hundred words. If you want my evidence, look at her output the last couple of years. You can... I don't know, have a guilty conscience and assume that it's about you personally, even though it clearly isn't about you. It's about a set of behaviors. Um, like, like I, I don't even, I don't even fucking know how to frame this. Like, there's some things that people say that are just so fucking stupid. Like, I don't, I can't give you a response because my mind doesn't work that way. I would posit that your mind doesn't work at all, but that would be mean. Wait. Is that a wedding ring on your hand? Wow. She's either the luckiest woman alive, to have a man that will bow and scrape at a snap of her fingers, or she's a hero, and took the ultimate bullet for the team. I would ask you not to breed, but it's probably too late. I'm just going to hope they got their intelligence from her. My mind would have never made that leap from that statement to that inference. And... I know I, it's like ableist and wrong and stuff for me to call someone stupid. I understand that that's the attitude people have. But what other word can I use for someone like Noel Plum? Snarky bastard. That might work. Use large words that don't mean what you think they mean, and combine them in an really unpalatable social justice warrior brand of word salad. For the love of oblivion, would you please, please make sense for once? I think the man is just stupid. Stupid in the sense that he apparently lacks the intellectual capacity to understand words uh, and to interpret them correctly. After the abuse of words you've made in the first quarter of your video, you're the last person that gets to call anyone stupid. Never mind the argument just 7 minutes and 43 seconds ago about how using semantics was pointless. Or at least, that's when I called you out on it. The reference was sometime during the preceding 16 seconds. Sad part is, we still have more than half an hour to go, and this video is already looking to be over an hour long. Um, and as someone who is apparently British, and therefore a native English speaker, I would assume, unless he grew up in the Galtacht or something, <laughs> which I don't think he did, I, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? I got no words. This this is not going to be a successful video. This is just going to be me ranting. I have no fucking words for people like this. There's nothing to disprove in the shit they say. Who the fuck were feminists that decided that landing on a comet after 10 years and billions of miles was less important than a fucking bowling shirt with pictures of women in pin-up poses on it? 
It didn't affect them in any way, but they were still so pissed off they drove the man to tears on international television. Who the fuck are you, to interject yourself and your sexist attitude into a conversation that you weren't invited to? Did it affect you directly? No? Then who the fuck are you to make that argument? The feminists have been using that particular weapon for years now, and you're going to call men out for it. That's hypocrisy, dumb base, and it pisses me off. Feminists have no shame. They rely on you and you ought to be ashamed for them. Say, the shit they say is just so ass backwards and useless and pointless. Just derails a fucking conversation and a discourse and contributes fucking nothing. What did you contribute to the discourse about bad behavior, whether masculine or otherwise? You know, it doesn't really matter. What do you contribute to the discourse of it by deciding that you'll heroically take the stand to be personally offended by something that has fuck all to do with you, personally? What the fuck are you contributing, Noel Plum, and all those people like you? You're just derailing a conversation that people are having that has an academic basis, that has a scholarly basis in things that people have actually studied and researched. You repeat yourself, then assert that there is an academic basis for this thing you're talking about. You claim there are studies, and then don't bother to tell us what they are or who did them. Where is your evidence? Do I need to invoke the ghost of Hitchens? What the fuck is the point of you? joining this discussion. Did you even do the research yourself? You know, I haven't read the research on toxic masculinity. So, I, I have nothing myself to really contribute to that. I can contribute my own experiences with toxic masculinity or what I perceive to be toxic masculinity as someone who has worked in um, the logging industry as, as one example. And, you know, I dealt with men who were, you know, what I would define as toxically masculine uh, because they were fucking uh, dangerous as all hell sometimes in their job, you know, trying to be macho. You know, I consider that toxic masculinity uh, where your, I, your mindset of, of I want to prove my manhood and my masculinity to my peers um, includes doing something ridiculously dangerous, um, which if you don't know, logging is the most dangerous job in North America, last I checked. It's even more dangerous than crab fishing. Um, logging was number one. So I used to do literally the most dangerous job in the U.S. In, in, or in North America, perhaps. And um, toxic masculinity is bad there. To be compassionate and sensitive and to have good communication skills um, and to not go, no pun intended, not to go out on a limb uh, and do something that's silly, but you think you might get some praise for because it was brave. Um, I've witnessed it myself, and I could say that it's a bad thing, and it has nothing to do with men. You haven't checked very closely then, have you? Fishing off the coast of Alaska is more dangerous by all accounts, only just before that, you shot yourself in the foot. You demand to know if Noel has done the research, admit that you haven't done it either. So then you cannot contribute to the conversation either. But what did you do? You screamed at Noel for a bit on Twitter at the time, and you're railing at him again now, assuming that Anita has done the research, and relating half-assed anecdotal evidence of what you think is toxic masculinity based on your work as a logger, and the risks that go with it. You're not in a position to open your yap, let alone call Noel or Dr. Mason or anyone like them pseudo-intellectual. Besides which, you're long past arguing with anyone's ideas. The entire video to date has been one long, run-on ad hominem attack. Being a man doesn't make you do ridiculously dangerous, stupid, um, selfish, entitled things. No, that would be feminism. They do lots of ridiculous, dangerous, and entitled things. Men usually do what is to be done, brave or not, and those that are stupid usually don't live long enough to breed. But then, Men are disposable, aren't they? That's what society seems to believe. A man's life is not worth the same as a woman's. Thousands of men die every day, and little is made of it except locally. When a woman dies, especially by violence, it's national news. If more than one woman dies, then it's a mass murder. A hundred men could be killed, and it might get a spot on the evening news. 
That has nothing to do with manhood. That has to do with an attitude that some people have in our society um, that involves being considered manly. And they're bad attitudes. They're objectively bad because they're dangerous. Uh, and they contribute nothing to the individual. Um, it's just dangerous, stupid behavior. Um, you mean that you've never did anything stupid and dangerous? Not once. Even without the rest of your side of the species looking on. I find that very unlikely. I do dangerous things every day as a consequence of what I do for a living. Am I doing it for the approval of my peers? Of course not. I'm doing it because that's the risk I took when I accepted the job. Yes, some men do silly, insane things, and as long as they only hurt themselves, who the fuck are you to try and stop them? Help, boy, women do the same shit, usually to impress men. Whether dangerous to oneself or to those around oneself. So, I mean, I've seen it firsthand, but... The point being, I can't really comment on the research, the behavioral research in, in sociology, anthropology, psychology, any of those fields. And I get the sensation, I get the suspicion that people like Noel Plum can't either. You know, so you've got to fucking eviscerate this woman for something that she said, which is not coming out of a vacuum, it's coming out of an academic sphere. And you've got fucking nothing to contribute to the conversation about it anyway. Because you didn't read the literature. You don't even fucking know where she's coming from making this statement. If Anita Sakishian is an academic, I'm a drop there. You, sir, are a fucking idiot. You haven't done any of the homework assigned and come in here lecturing Noel about sociology? How do you know what his credentials are? Did you research him before you decided to tear him a new ass? Because I had a look at a few of your other videos before I started this one. And I looked at both of Noel's concerning Anita, and Noel never once attacked Anita directly. He went after her arguments. You've done nothing but hammer at people like Noel, to use your own wording, and you do even that very badly. That straw man is over 15 foot high now. Don't you think it might be time to start a new one? You just decide to be personally offended. And I, and I don't understand why. Why is the phrase toxic masculinity offensive to you? The term toxic masculinity isn't offensive in and of itself. It's not well defined, and the way she used it on a 14-year-old boy was incredibly offensive, particularly when she wasn't in possession of any of the facts beyond that he killed a person and then himself in the school cafeteria. She then went on to pitch a book, and then claimed that all mass shootings are perpetrated by men. This is false, and if you, either you or John Boy had bothered to do the homework, you might have known that. Do you think that your masculinity is toxic, and you're trying to defend your own masculinity? Because when I hear toxic masculinity with that qualifier, I don't think my masculinity necessarily. I think, oh, we're talking about toxic masculinity. Except that your masculinity is toxic. In that you're so broken by feminism that you're willing to run off at the mouth about how other men are evil subhuman troglodytes. You see Anita's master's degree, the thesis for which is written in half-chewed pig crayon, and assume that she knows what she is talking about. News flash, she doesn't. She has a degree in communications, and a master's she didn't earn in social and political thought. She trained to manipulate people, and she does it extremely well. That is to say masculinity that is bad. Unless you want to tell me that there's no kind of traditionally masculine behaviors that we observe in this culture um, that are in any way bad on any objective level, or even subjective level for that matter. Like thinking that you have to dominate other people. For that, That's one example of a traditionally masculine behavior that is upheld and enforced, being competitive instead of cooperative. Um, can you not see how that can be bad sometimes? You still say the darndest things, you know? Look, I know you want to be objective about human behavior, but as someone that deals with people of all sorts, day in and day out, I can tell you that there is very little objective about real people in the real world. There is not one behavior in men that cannot be at least matched by a woman. In some cases, women are far crueler. A man will kill other men and occasionally women. A very few men will rape a woman. 
Men very rarely kill children, but women do with alarming frequency. That bitch, Susan Smith. The one that put her car on auto pointed at a lake, with her children still strapped securely inside? That's not an isolated incident. Women kill their own children a lot more often than you'd ever believe. Women also rape men. There are more than a few ways to get a man up and keep him that way for as long as you want or need. Rape isn't about sex, it's about power, and a piece of yarn is more than enough to keep him under control for hours on end. Besides, sometimes, competition can be healthy. Cooperation is nice, but competition is what advances us as a species. We have our own competitive games too, just more subtle, and usually aimed at other women. Can you not see how, you know, taken to an extreme, that is the behavior of some murderous psychopaths, is controlling other people and enforcing one's will over other people and, and getting a thrill out of that? That's something we encourage in people as masculine behavior. And that's a toxic aspect of it. Do you not fucking understand words, no plum? I really must know. Not one of the behaviors you've described is strictly masculine. As I've already described, we do that sort of shit too, and we are better equipped for control games. We don't forget slights, we have something every man wants, and we are trained from the cradle to use it to secure a place for ourselves in the biological order. If I wanted to, I could go out right now, and get some dick, provided I wasn't inclined to be picky. Any woman can. And it's only a question of how low she's willing to go. Oh, I like, I really don't have the patience for someone like this. I don't, and that's why I yelled at him on Twitter and blocked him. But, I, but you know, like I said, it's, it's a symptom of a bigger problem. Because No Plum is just one example of this kind of man who will show up on, you know, any, in any discussion, anything that they have open access to. And just stand up in the middle, of, you know, metaphorically speaking, just stand up in the middle of the fucking room, interrupt the adults who are talking, and act like something is actually offensive when it isn't. Like you're right now. The same way that you're giving feminists a pass on. You just yelled a bunch of incomprehensible shit at him and then blocked him, despite having nothing to add to the conversation by your own admission. Yet not only did you interject yourself, but you immediately censored debate, the same way you did with this video. Anita is a public figure on Twitter and YouTube, and is subject to criticism. You are a public figure on YouTube, and thus subject to the same. Yet you chose to disable comments, and hit your likes to dislikes ratio. That's not entering into an academic debate. That's you trying to rule from on high, in your ivory tower, waving at the pins. If it hadn't been tweeted by th underfoot, it wouldn't have as many views as it does. My video won't require them to watch yours, as I don't intend to cut out any of your stupidity. I will be nice and leave a link, in case they want a good mad or a laugh. You're well on your way to full Macintosh as that is, and still more than half the video to go. It's absolutely ridiculous, and I can't stand it, and I can't stand the justifications. You know, I'm I'm a firm believer in the idea that people who say and do silly things should be offered some sort of charity and forgiveness if they say, "Oh yeah, that was stupid." You know, because I do this all the time, where I read something and the mind gets ahead of itself and you misinterpret the words. You don't bother reading on. You see something that's taken out of context and you make a prejudgment about it. I mean, I've I've read reviews of some people's academic work. It doesn't even have to be academic. I've read reviews of, you know, like, you know, a film and said, oh, that movie's probably going to suck. And I already have a bias because, you know, maybe I respected the person who gave me that information. Maybe it was my friend who said, this movie sucks. And I usually like what my friend likes. You know, whatever. Uh, the point being, you know, like, I've had stuff soured for me because of uh, a bias or a prejudgment of it. You know, so I, I'd be perfectly willing to forgive someone like Noel Plum. But the problem is, is that when you point it out to them in as plain language as possible, they, they double down. They double down. These are people who can't deal with being wrong. 
They can't deal with admitting their faults, admitting their biases, admitting that maybe they were pre uh, prejudging, admitting that perhaps they were overreacting to something that was relatively harmless um, and maybe not even relevant to anything they, they care about. They just jump in the conversation um, and they spout their bullshit and then when they're called on their bullshit, or even just ask questions like to try to direct them and, and decipher what nonsense it is that they're spouting. Because as I said earlier, I can't even make sense of it most of the time because it's so incoher incoherent and irrelevant to the discussion. What the? F what are you saying? Why are you here? You really enjoy the whole shooting yourself in the foot thing, don't you? You're projecting so hard in the last two minutes that you're halfway to the edge of the observable universe. And the goalposts are on the other side of the line, where the universe became transparent to photons. First, your original posts were not incomprehensible. I've seen a lot of feminist propaganda in my day, and you can't even form a coherent sentence now, weeks after you blew your stack. You've been rambling for nearly 20 minutes, and you still have yet to move on from feeling angered that someone called Anita out on her bullshit. Enough with the word salad. Can we have an argument, please? Just one. Pretty please with sugar. Um, but, the, you know, you call them on it and they don't say anything. They start to justify. And the more they start to justify, the more obtuse they get. You know, No Plum wanted to debate, you know, Anita Sarkeesian about this toxic masculinity. He didn't go read the literature about it. He didn't present a real thesis. Um, he didn't try to basically counter-argue the points. What did he do? He tried to define the word masculinity. And then he said, well, see, masculinity, I'm going to create this, like, weird syllogism between masculinity and man, even though, you know, you don't have to be masculine to be a man. Oh, I'm sorry, we forgot that little fucking detail, didn't we, no plum? Um, and therefore, extrapolating from there by some pseudo-intellectual bullshit logic, it's offensive to men! Oh, I need a Sarkeesian, what a fucking bitch! Big words you still can't use correctly in a sentence. It sounds like English, and somehow is not. That takes talent, good sir knight. You claim he hasn't read the literature, you admitted you haven't, and you bite him when he starts by defining his terms. You, sir, are not an academic. Definitions of terms are one of the first things you give when entering a debate. You are a fucking fool, no plum. With your obtuse bullshit. Not even arguing the point, not contributing to the discussion, not reading the literature, not knowing what the fuck you're talking about, or even what the fuck someone else is talking about, before you even fucking respond to them. And you don't even have the decency to just say, you're right, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about, please tell me what I can read so I can be on the same page as these people. Jesus, shut the fuck up, no plum. You and your pseudo-intellectual, obnoxious, discourse-derailing, bullshit, faux outrage. You don't even give a shit about masculinity or Anita Sarkeesian. So fucking ridiculous. I've watched a couple of his videos. I can only stand to watch a couple of his videos because they're all the same talking in circles, semantical bullshit. And, the, and with the logical fallacy, logical fallacy. Word of advice to most of you people out there who, who accuse others of logical fallacies. Nine out of ten times you're not fucking using the logical fallacy correctly. And furthermore, the second part of that, just because something is stated in the form of a logical fallacy, it doesn't mean it's wrong. You have to be a little more sensitive than that. Okay, I now require a definition for this use of the words sensitive and fallacy. Not only has your entire video to date been an ad hominem of gargantuan proportions, you're only now getting around to ripping up that straw man you started building in the first minute. Your level of projection cannot be measured in any real way. You've pushed a false dichotomy, attempted censorship. And you've beaten this particular horse so badly we put it in the ground years ago, and you've only been at it for the last 20 minutes. As it is, my word processor says I have over 4300 words written, all but the first 600 in direct answer to your incoherent ranting. 
But how much have you actually said? Not a thing. You've been describing how you're mad at Noel, but you've been repeating the same things over and over again for most of the 20 minutes you've been rambling. At this point, the video is going to be feature length, and there's nothing whatsoever I can do about that. At any rate, I'm the nice one. I shudder to think what would have happened if it were rendering this and not me. You haven't defeated an entire field of research. Just because you found one person who worded something in a fallacious manner. That's what you fucking pseudo-intellectuals do. You like you dance around on Twitter uh, congratulating yourselves and you know high-fiving each other because one of you was able to point out that some other random person on Twitter made a statement with a logical fallacy. Which again, 9 out of 10 times you aren't even right about. But even that one time you are right about it. You're fucking high-fiving each other like, oh yeah, we wrecked the feminists. Do you even realize how fucking idiotic you look? And again, I apologize ahead of time if these slurs are considered ableist, or these words, stupid, idiotic. I've been told by some people they are. I'm not convinced. We need some word to describe when people are stupid. And if stupid isn't going to be the word, then, you know, fill in your own then. I I'm, I'm apologize, but... Yes, you know, to me, it's like you should know better. It's not stupid in the sense that you lack the intellectual ability. It's stupid in the sense that you you feel like you have no duty whatsoever to think and to use your your brain and to use your powers of intellect. Um, you feel like this is how you address a serious discourse. What are you apologizing for, and who to? Call an ass an ass, because frankly. You going to the Tumblr elite is getting old, fast. If you're going to be a social justice warrior, you need to own that shit. As it is, you're quarter-assing it, and indulging in Peter-grade dishonesty while you're at it. You're anti-men's rights, according to a few of your 30-odd videos, and very much pro-feminism. You just proved beyond any reasonable doubt that you're trying to live up to the ideals of the social justice warrior, good sir Nightwood you should be thinking. Especially when you accuse others of not doing so. No one is above criticism, Anita, not you, and not me. You're welcome to try and take me apart, and expose me for a woman-hating bitch. Because that last word is absolutely true. Oh, and by the way, you owe me a source that says that Anita is a real academic. Make it a good one, because I have her master's thesis, and it says otherwise. I have her videos. And they're pretty propaganda pieces with no research value. And you wonder why no one takes you seriously. Why people block you. Why someone like me might make a whole YouTube video ranting about it. Um, it's because none of us have time for you. There's a reason why when I go to an academic conference, I typically don't meet people like this. Because people like this don't get along in academia. Because heaven forbid you should have to read some fucking books to come up with an opinion and to give yourself some justifications for the views that you have. Heaven forbid you actually have to read some research. Um, heaven forbid that, you know, someone can, can write a very fallacious paper, and nevertheless, we still find out that the information, the data, the conclusions were correct. Uh, they were just reached in a fallacious manner. Um, you know, there's, there's so many nuances here. And you people think you're rationalists. And by you people, I mean no plum and his ilk. You people think you're rationalists. And it's the most absurdly comical case of projection I've ever seen in my fucking life. That's rich, coming from you. First, I want to know who gave you a degree through which you could even get through the door of an academic conference as something other than catering staff. What are your credentials? You've made innumerable claims to academic capacity. And the arguments here could be soundly defeated by a dead Drew. I personally don't have any degrees, but I have done coursework in debate and critical thinking at every level except primary school. Even then, I could still work my way around Pascal's wager. The day when someone like No Plum, some pseudo-intellectual, little fucking twit, tells someone like, like anybody, it doesn't have to be Anita Sarkeesian, it doesn't have to be me, this is not a scholarly thing I'm doing right now. This is a rant. Um, tell, tell someone like us, any one of us, 
that we're the ones who aren't being rationalists because we're not engaging in this, you know, fucking sophistic bullshit. It's unbelievable. You cast aspersions on others about not providing a thesis statement in 131 characters and then try to excuse your own bullshit as just a rant. You've a lot to learn, boy oh. You're whinging on about the big bad man that disagrees with you, calling him pseudo-intellectual. In the tweets, he was an anti-intellectual. Which is it? And I still deal with this on Twitter. Just this morning, I had some ass uh, send me a storify thing. Is that how you pronounce that? I'm not even sure. Um, to try to convince me that sociology isn't science. I've said this before, and I'll say this again. In order to prove that something isn't science, like if you're going to make that statement, you need to show that it doesn't use the scientific method. You have to know what the scientific method is, too, I, I hope, in order to do that. You have to show that something doesn't use the scientific meth method um, and is not peer-reviewed. I, I would say those are the two biggest things. If you can't show me that sociology doesn't use the scientific method and isn't peer-reviewed, then you really have no... no foundation to stand on to make such an inane and pointless claim as sociology isn't real science. No, you only need to prove that it doesn't use the scientific method, and I'm not sure you could tell me what that is. In fact, there are lots of applications in sociology as a whole that can't be bothered. Feminist theory and women's studies are apparently not beholden to it, as can be seen by the statistics they like to repeat over and over again most of which have been thoroughly debunked. Yet sociology departments all over the Western world treat them as a science. Your ramshackle defense of it, though, leads me to believe that you're a sociologist, or like to pretend to be, and that would explain rather a lot of your deficient argumentation skills and your cultural attitudes. It's as simple as that. Don't ever fucking come to me. I don't have fucking time for you people, okay? Contrary to what many people might think, you know, contrary to someone like Thunderfoot, perhaps, or, or basically anyone, I do research all the time. I'm busy. That's why I haven't made a video in a long time. That's why last semester I didn't make a video pretty much all semester. I, you know, I make, I mostly make videos in my spare time. Um, I made it during the summer when I had spare time because I took a break all summer and I was writing music instead of uh, writing research. Um... I mean, I'm, a, I'm an artist as well as a researcher, and that's, that's something that um, many scientists may not understand. Uh, but that be, I mean, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but the point being, like, yeah, I actually am too fucking busy for this bullshit. So if you're going to come to me, even if it's on Twitter, even if it's something, you know, in, in such a, you know, pointless forum as that. Twitter isn't totally pointless, but you know what I mean. Um, Non-academic forum. You know, don't come to me with that bullshit. Unless you can at least provide some argument. And of course you can't provide that fucking argument because it's not true. Because sociology does use the scientific method and sociology is peer-reviewed. As is psychology. As is anthropology. As is music. I mean, music is in the humanities and fine arts. And even we have to be peer-reviewed. We don't use the scientific method, of course, because music isn't science. But even we have to be peer-reviewed. So now you're too busy to deal with the people from non-academic forums. You must be great fun at parties. For the record, even the creators have peer review journals. Would you consider that science? But what am I saying? You're not even interested in the debate, because you have research to do. If you're a sociologist, you would think that the people out there in the world would be your laboratory, and talking to them could give you valuable insight into the way society actually works, instead of the one Anita's sold you on. What am I saying? Of course that's not relevant to you. Because seeing how real people work might open your mind to the idea that the bulk of men are pre-rapists. Closed minds don't discover new things, and are useless in any level of true academia. Saying stupid shit on Twitter doesn't have to be peer-reviewed. 
So even people in the humanities, you know, for those of you who worship science as somehow more superior, as somehow superior to the humanities and to any other kind of discourse, superior to philosophy, a lot of them seem to think that. Um, you know what? At least we're fucking peer reviewed by other scholars. Most of them, if not all of them, with PhDs in some relevant field. Who the fuck are you? And that reminds me of, of Thunderfoot. Um, Thunderfoot had the audacity, after he touts his academic credentials as reasons why he should be trusted as some sort of source and not someone like Anita Sarkeesian, although ironically she does have academic credentials, and specifically in, in the fields that he likes to talk about on his stupid fucking channel. Um, you know, he had the audacity to me on Twitter to say that PhDs are a Mickey Mouse qualification, not a real qualification. Well, then why the fuck do you tout yours as, as basically to be some reason why you should be more trusted than someone like Anita Sarkeesian, who has actually read some fucking books and articles on the topic that she's discussing, whereas you haven't. You read Wikipedia. You looked up the word sexual dimorphism on Wikipedia and you used that as your case to say feminism is wrong. Ah. Uh. So finally you get to your next would-be victim. It's interesting that you put Thunderfoot and Anita into the same class. Nay, you put her above him, and assume that he's no better than your first victim. What makes you think that he hasn't read articles? Amongst academics, though, he's right. A PhD is only the start of one's adventures in academia. Your publication record and your number of times cited mean a lot. If he'd published as many quality papers as, say, Stephen Hawking, he would speak, and academia would damned sure listen up. But then if you were a proper academic, you would know that, wouldn't you? Anita has a master's degree based on what amounts to fraudulent terms. I would expect better than that from an 8th grader in an American public school. Worse, I'd stand a better than average chance of getting it. Your next bit is staggeringly idiotic, though. You base your assumption on Wikipedia, which although nearly useless as a citation, is nevertheless a very nice place for an overview that the average lay person to get a grip on a concept without having to shell out cash for academic journals. Of course he's going to refer to it when speaking to a lay audience. If the lay person wants to learn more, then he or she can go to the bottom and read the various sources. I know a number of academics that use it to find literature on fields in which they had little or no expertise. You don't even understand what feminism is. You do realize that feminism is part of a moral philosophical system as well as a kind of activism, as well as a viewpoint by which to do scientific research. Feminism has more than one usage as a word. What the fuck are you refuting? Are you refuting the philosophy? Because if you're trying to refute the philosophy of feminism, then you are a bigot. That's why, I forget which feminist it was who said that, but that's why one of those feminists said in a very famous statement, you know, if you're not a feminist, you're a bigot. Because we're talking about the philosophical sense. If you don't believe in gender equality as a moral imperative, then yeah, you are a bigot. That was Aaron Nare most recently, and you'll want to talk about bigotry. You drank the poison Kool-Aid. And now you're back to spouting the party line. There is more than one classification of feminism, but there is only one consistent definition of feminism. Check your dictionary. All the other definitions rely on the first. Now let's get the goalposts back to where they belong, and put the straw back in the bale, please. So, you know, what, what the fuck do you even mean by anti-feminism? You conveniently lump it all together. Like, I don't like some feminist activist, or I don't like Anita Sarkeesian who does feminist analysis of video games, therefore feminism is stupid because sexual dimorphism. Do you have any idea how fucking stupid that is, Thunderfoot? And your followers? Do you have any fucking idea how stupid that is? And that's the thing, Thunderfoot, you should know how stupid that is. Because last time I checked, you were getting paid to do scientific research. You're, uh, you publish peer-reviewed papers. You have a PhD, which despite your, your backpedaling bullshit statement that it's a, Mi a Mickey Mouse qualification, clearly you and I and everyone else knows that when you go to fucking university for 10 years, it better mean something. Okay? So don't give me that bullshit. All aboard the projection train. You just surpassed full McIntosh and are well on your way to full Tate. Just because he has a PhD in physics or chemistry, 
doesn't mean he knows anything about the way social sciences work. Assuming they work. However, one need only compare Anita to other feminists of this wave to see where the lines are drawn. That was in Seattle. You're in fucking red China, with a quick stop in London for some chips. Obviously you think it's important. I think it's important, and I think everyone else should think it's important. And that's not in a an authority thing either like you should trust us because we're the authorities it's no you should trust us because if someone gave us a phd that at least means we had to read some fucking books now you make an argument from authority after denying that we should listen to you because you're an authority are you even listening to yourself someone who doesn't have any degrees we have no way of knowing if they read any books do we we have no way of knowing if they ever did any original research we have no way of knowing if they have any mastery of this topic in any way whatsoever. At least the PhD tells us that, well, some other people who do have a mastery of this topic apparently thought this person was had mastered the topic well enough and had contributed enough original research to, to give them some credentials for it. Okay, that's what a PhD means. Um, regardless of what else a PhD means, that's what a PhD means. That's why we typically respect someone's views, because usually they probably read some fucking books, if nothing else. And especially if they wrote their dissertation on a specific topic, that usually means they're one of the experts in the world on that topic. That's usually how we think of it. They are one of the contributing experts in the entire world, one of a select few on a very specific topic. In Anita Sarkeesian's case, she contributed to discussing gender roles in media. That was her contribution. And a bunch of other people with these degrees who also write peer-reviewed research and also had to get um, validated by other academics and other scholars gave her the go-ahead to say that yep, we, our stamp of approval is on this. This woman knows a little bit of what she's talking about on this specific issue. That's what the fucking degree means. You know it, I know it. If you don't know it, now you do know it. It's as simple as that, okay? Except that Anita doesn't have the minimum qualification you state is needed to be taken seriously. Your argument, or at least your brain-dead version of it, is thereby invalid. I'm not going to take your word for it and simply swallow what you said without some sort of evidence. Because we already know that she tossed out the only piece of empirical data she had in the entire paper in favor of her narrative. She spends the bulk of her time in her introduction about 20 pages in argument, and the rest is all the same basic bullshit narrative she's been spinning since the world became aware that she even existed. You can't prove she read a single book. You can only prove that she watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Farscape, and Xena, Warrior Princess. Her critics can prove that she steals game footage, and academics everywhere are laughing at her. Her paper wasn't peer-reviewed, it was endorsed by the faculty at York University, and they handed her a worthless piece of paper that she uses as a cudgel to shame people into liking her online. Her contribution was to set gaming back 30 years. But, Thunderfoot should know better. He should fucking know better. You know, no plum, he's an idiot. People like him, they're idiots. They're obtuse. The best they can do is troll your statements to find out a stray logical fallacy that half the time, if not more than half the time, they're not even fucking right about anyway. Argument from ignorance. You don't know Noel. You haven't looked at his credentials. In the two videos he thought you might be on about, and a third I found on my own, he makes no reference to logical fallacies. He suggests in one of them that there is no pleasing Anita, and from what I've seen, He's absolutely correct on that score. And then argue the definition of a fucking word to try to destroy, comically try to destroy an entire discourse on something. Um. Because words have meanings, you want to as twat, and redefining them to suit your narrative is dishonest at best. <laughs> it's actually funny. It's so stupid, it's funny. It's so ridiculous, it's funny. But Thunderfoot should fucking know better. That's why I asked him on Twitter... Why do you feel like you don't need to read the literature in order to, to, to discuss feminist theory? Yeah, because I'm not an expert on feminist theory either. That's why I don't talk about feminist theory. You don't. Your video list disagrees with you. For that matter, this video disagrees with you. You're not shy about talking feminism when you think no one's going to call you out for it. 
I am a feminist in the moral sense of what I believe. You know, I'm a gender egalitarian. That's what feminism means in the moral sense, um, in the philosophical sense, okay? I am that. And so I talk about feminism in that context. I talk about feminism in other contexts. As someone who is an art analyst, I have never done feminist analysis of art. The closest thing I've come to feminist analysis of art myself is I've analyzed tropes in opera. And opera being a product of its time period, pointing out sex as tropes is a truism. Um, not like today, where we're making new art. If, if someone were writing an opera today that had the same sex as tropes as opera in the 17th century, then we could criticize that person for, in the very least, being completely fucking unoriginal. And, and having no relevance to modern society in the character and in the story. Um, but that being said, you know, that's what Anita Sarkeesian does. I think that's pretty obvious. I don't even follow her work, but I think that's obvious what she does. Um, if you don't even understand how art analysis works, if you don't understand what you don't understand what feminism is, Thunderfoot, that's clearly the case. And you can't make the distinction between feminist philosophy and feminist activism and feminist art criticism and feminist science. Uh, you can't do that, you, or you refuse to because it's very convenient and easy for you. That is not the behavior of a scholar, and you should fucking know better. You should know better? Neither one of you is biologically equipped to get a woman's view on anything. Your brains are wired all wrong. That said, Thunderfoot may not know how feminist philosophy works but I defy you to find me a single instance of feminist science. I'm waiting, dumb base. Nothing. Fine, here you go, then. Thunderfoot does have the ability to spot a logical fallacy a mile away, and your feminism will not change that. An eater uses command language and shaming tactics to sell him snake oil, and she's damned good at it. However, for those that are open-minded enough to pull her shit apart and look at the slimy bit underneath, then you're going to see all the faults and problems in her narrative. Problem is, Knight, you didn't look. You won't look, because it'll destroy your worldview. I'm half expecting she's going to pop her head out at the end of your video and smile for the camera. Because let me tell you something now, she's not going to spread for you. Ever. Someone gave you a PhD. I mean, here's the, going back to the PhD thing. Someone gave you a PhD because they thought that you had mastery of a specific topic. And now you're using that PhD as a bludgeon to say that you know more about Anita Sarkeesian, you know more than you know more about feminist theory than Anita Sarkeesian because sexual dimorphism. He never made that claim. He claimed that we are a sexually dimorphic species and that Anita is full of shit and gets wins because vagina. He then goes on to hammer her arguments flatter than Keeney Reeves' acting range. You're a fucking clown. And in many ways, you're worse than people like Noel Plum. Because Noel Plum is, is really too much of a moron to realize how dumb he is. How uneducated he is. He honestly thinks that what he does is intellectual. But I get the sneaking suspicion that you do know better, Thunderfoot. Doctor, you do know better. Or at least you should know better. Because someone fucking published your work. And... You take these credentials that people so graciously bestowed upon you um, based on their perception of your mastery of the subject and your expertise. And you use that as a bludgeon against other academics in a field that you know nothing about. And you've demonstrated time and time again that you know nothing about it. You don't even respect it to go learn about it. Because you think it's bullshit. You think something is bullshit without even studying it. And that's bullshit. You know, this video would be a lot shorter if you didn't incessantly repeat yourself. We are up to a whole 5 minutes of something that might be considered content, at just about the 35 minute mark. What did my old drill instructor say? Right. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. You know... Let me tell you a quick story. One of the things that I wrote about in my own career that was very controversial is I wrote again, I wrote a thesis, uh, you know, a paper against geometric music theory, which is very popular in my field right now. And it is complete nonsense. It, it is a very elaborate 
geometric music theory is a very, very elaborate um, argumentum verbosium. Uh, is that how you say that? That fallacy? Well, whatever the fancy Latin name is. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very, very elaborate argument from verbosity. And it's like, if we can couch music theory in all of this pseudo-mathematical, it's, it's not even mathematically sound, because I brought it to mathematicians to discuss it. Um, you couch it in all this mathematical mumbo-jumbo, and, and it feels like it gives itself more legitimacy, when really all we're doing is we're analyzing the compositional features of an art form uh, with a compositional language in mind. It doesn't require mathematical language or some sort of pseudo-scientific language in order to discuss music theory. But somewhere along the way, the logical positives positivists got a hold of it and decided that music theory would be better off if we made it incomprehensibly mathematical so that neither musicians nor mathematicians could understand it because mathematicians can't understand the, the musical aspects of the analysis and musicians can't understand the irrelevant complex differential geometry involved um, and I wrote against that but you know what I had to do to do that Thunderfoot it is true that I looked at it and I knew from day one that this was a bullshit theory. That in the least this theory didn't tell us anything. That traditional music theory couldn't have told us about the, a piece's construction. Um, you know, if I tell you that it modulates from C major to E minor, that's all you need to know. You don't have to show me a geometric model of what C major to E minor looks like in a conceptual Hilbert space. Or some stupid bullshit like that. And if you understood what I just said, congratulations, you're one of like the dozen people in the entire world who does. Um, <laughs> which, of course, is what makes it so popular. Like I said, it's an argument from verbosity. Uh, peop other people don't understand it, even other scholars. That's what makes it seem so mystified. It's woo, as, as some people in the skeptic community like to say. Um, it's no different than Deepak Chopra talking about quantum physics to justify some, some inane bullshit about spirituality. Um, that's what, that's what geometric music theory is. And I knew from day one that it was stupid without doing the research. But in order to write my thesis and be taken seriously, I still had to go do the research. I even had to collaborate, as I said, with mathematicians so I could fully understand it. If you're having trouble understanding feminist discourse, maybe you should talk to some feminists about it. You launch into an anecdote and then use it to try and make a point on research. What makes you think he didn't talk to some feminists? Surely there are a couple running around in his line of work. Most likely, though, the sort of feminists he'd run into into the toxic third wave sort that would shame him for the crime of being born with a penis. I wasn't, and I still have a hard time talking to those people. They're almost completely incomprehensible. If you don't already know what feminism is to that individual, then you're not going to learn problem with learning feminist theory is that if you talk to 10 third wave feminists about what feminism is, you're going to get 12 different answers. 4 minute and 22 seconds to go, and you still have no arguments that aren't entirely based in fallacious reasoning, and absolutely no evidence that would pass muster in the academic arena. It doesn't even have to be Anita Sarkeesian. You know there are people who get paid for a living to do research and teach at the university level feminist theory and feminist science, and feminist art criticism, and, and art analysis, and, and so on and so forth. People get paid to do this. They're peer-reviewed. They're peer-reviewed by people outside of the feminist specific discourse. I have done peer review on music theory that had a feminist bent. And I don't do feminist music theory, as I said before. So, you know, it's not like it's a circle jerk. They're peer reviewed by other scholars in science and humanities in general, not necessarily by other feminist scholars in science and humanities. Then how are these people peers to the people submitting the work? I can't even place you in the halls of academia, as you've now claimed at least three different fields of study. I'm thinking you're just winding people up now, and that you have no more credentials than I do. At this point, I wouldn't be even remotely surprised. Uh, but that being said, you know, maybe you should collaborate. In the least, maybe you should do some fucking research. Because it seems, in, it seems ridiculous to me and absurd that you honestly think that this is kosher, that you can get away with this. 
in that people like me, people who may know a little bit better because we actually went to school for a while um, and understand how this shit should work, won't realize what you're doing. And, you know, that's the thing. Like, I gave you a real hard time on Twitter, Thunderfoot, but I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Other people think you're an idiot. They think you're an idiot and they think you're a bad scientist. Well, you are a bad scientist in this context. I honestly don't think you're an idiot. I think you have a little bit of a self-awareness to know what it is you're doing. I think you know that you're making YouTube videos and that people are paying you money to do it. And you can spout whatever bullshit you want. And as long as it's bullshit that your audience likes, then they're going to love you for it and they're going to pay you more. That's what you're doing. I honestly think that. And, and, and before you think like that's a conspiracy, I mean, I guess it is kind of a conspiracy theory when you think about it, but I'm actually giving you the benefit of the doubt here. Other people, other scholars on YouTube and on Twitter have just called you out as a moron who doesn't understand science and <laughs> doesn't understand even his own field. I want to see your sources on that, please. Because I can check Thunderfoot's numbers on his science videos and they come out with a mean error of 0.2%. That doesn't sound like bad science to me. As far as benefit of the doubt, I gave you that when the video began, and you thoroughly shattered my expectations. You've gone off the deep end and hit your head on the bottom. Your mind is entirely locked away in your little narrative, and I doubt we'll ever find what's left of it. Yeah, uh, there's a PhD chemist I talked to on YouTube and on Twitter who is of the opinion that you don't even understand chemistry very well for a man who has a PhD in it. Uh, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you know you're doing this. Um, however, the fact that you, you're not just incompetent, the fact that I believe you know that you're doing this, kind of makes it worse. Because you should fucking know better. And even if you are an incompetent scientist, someone gave you a PhD, so you should fucking know better anyway. You can't hide behind your PhD when you want to be taken more seriously than someone like Anita Sarkeesian. And then, when other people with PhDs talk about how bullshit that is, then distance yourself from it and say, well, PhD is a PhD, it doesn't mean anything, blah, blah, blah. Well, in your case, I'm afraid it does mean something. And it means you should fucking know better. The fact that I can have a conversation with you that is identical to a conversation I have with someone like Noel Plum is disgusting. So, there's your video. Have a good one. You wrap up by insisting that Thunderfoot should know better, and you fail to name the PhD chemist you had that conversation with, so we can't even verify that he said anything of the sort. Absent Thunderfoot making a statement on the matter, I'm going to suggest that your final assertions are bollocks. Unlike you, I'm not doing this to get hits, or even the attention of the people you accuse. I'm in this to highlight your toxicity for the viewers of the channel, in the hopes that they won't be taken in by that sort of shit themselves. That's it for me, though. This has been a huge marathon, and I hope that in exposing what a rabid white knight sounds like, maybe they'll be less inclined to touch the poop when they see another one. Good Sir Knight here spent the entire 40 minutes defending Anita by attacking two of her detractors, and that won't stand. Shutting down a debate she started doesn't earn you any points from me. If you like what we're doing here, please rate and subscribe if you feel like seeing more. More than anything we love your comments. I realize this video is going to run long, but if you stayed this long, then you're wonderful people. I await the debate, and if you have questions you want me to answer, then feel free to post them, and I'll get on them as soon as possible. As per the standard for the channel, Links are available to our Twitter and Patreon pages, in the description. I believe that Kagei and Rent both have Ask.fm pages as well. Until next time, be safe, and don't let the main ideologies bite. I think Destiny is going to be next with the Creationist Canal series next week, but if not, it'll be Ren tackling something else. See you soon.